everybody, in today's video, I will be doing my draft grade on the NFC West division for their 2024 draft class. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I did an NFC East video in my last video, but in this video, new division, we are going to talk about the Los Angeles Rams with the first team. In the first round, they got Jared Verse, who was easily a top three edge rusher in the draft. He has his Brian Burns, Kevon Thibodeau-esque style to his play, and I believe that is the, that is his ceiling. So Rams had needed edge help. They definitely got that in Jared Verse, along with getting his teammate from Florida State, Braden Fisk, had an amazing, amazing NFL combine, elite athleticism, very quick. He is probably not going to be your typical zero nose tackle, but three tech, probably have him out ride, be um, – He's explosiveness at the defensive line. He is not going to replace Aaron Donald. He is not going to be the next great tight end. Do I know that? Probably not, but you cannot replace Aaron Donald. But overall, solid pick getting Braden Fisk. Then they got Blake Corum running back out of Michigan, and I think this is a great pick. Blake Corum, probably top five, top three running back in the draft. Um, I think this is a situation where Sean McVay is going to utilize Blake and Kyron Williams at the same time, probably going to be a 50-50 split, 60-40 split. Um, Blake is such a very, very excellent runner, has a great quickness, very good at finding the holes, very shifty, can stop on the dime. Um, I think they, um, him and Kyron will be a great running back duo for the Rams, so Blake Corum. Great, great running back pick. Then he got Cameron Kitchens out of Miami. Safety. He is a great center field safety. Can work on an island. He is definitely not someone that you want playing closer to the line of scrimmage as he may get outran by a tight end or a slot. So definitely not someone that you would want coming down the line of scrimmage playing press man coverage or staying one-on-one -on, -one on a fast receiver. So Center field only center field uh, center field only safety kitchens great great pick especially with Jordan Fuller as a free agent um, then he got Brennan Jackson edge fifth round Tyler Davis defensive tackle definitely definitely key that they started to replenish the defensive line especially double dipping at the edge position defensive tackle position they got Joshua Cardi punk kicker uh, place kicker sorry. And of Stanford, then they got Jordan Whittington, Texas wide receiver, Bo Limmer, who is a interior guard out of Arkansas. He is someone that can play both guard positions and the center position. So he is definitely someone that I can see coming in as a day one starter for the Los Angeles Rams. But he is a solid pick, great value to get him in the sixth round for Los Angeles Rams. Then they got offensive guard. KT Leviston. Overall, the Los Angeles Rams had a very solid draft. Um, about half of these people on this list can be instant contributors to the Rams. Um, I kind of thought they would have maybe gotten a quarterback. I know Garoppolo is there, Stafford's there, they're definitely up there in age. Maybe getting an offensive tackle, offensive tackle here, but overall, solid pick for Los Angeles Rams, and I definitely give them a good B grade. B grade for the Rams. Now, next up in the NFC West, the Seattle Seahawks. Definitely, definitely solid draft class for the Seahawks in the first round at pick 16. Great value getting a Byron Murphy the second. I know some mocks him as a top 10 pick. I thought the Seahawks were going to be trade back candidates, maybe trading back into the 20s. But the fact that they were able to stick at 16 and get a solid defensive tackle on Byron Murphy II is such an A-plus home run pick for the Seahawks. He could play everywhere on the defensive line, 5-tech, 3-tech, up against the center. Very versatile defensive lineman, has amazing ferocity plays with a bulldozer mentality. He may not have the best change of direction skills to chase mobile quarterbacks, but overall, he's someone that's going to help others at the defensive line get opportunities to the quarterback as well as getting to the quarterback himself. So the fact that the Seahawks took care of the defensive line with Byron Murphy, home run pick right there. Christian Haynes out of UConn, 
solid, solid guard in this draft. Probably easily a top 10, top 7 guard. Um, played, you can play both left guard, right guard positions. I know um, the taking care of the offensive line was definitely um, a thing of need for the Seahawks. I know they got um, the tackle positions a bit set up there, but you can never have enough offensive linemen in the trenches. Um, I'm sure he could probably come in and play center, um, but probably coming as a left guard, right guard. So definitely a great pick over there. Again, Christian Haynes, Seahawks, Tyrese Knight, UTEP linebacker, definitely solidifying the linebacker position. Um, AJ Barner, tight end out of Michigan. He's a versatile tight end. Um, he's someone that can either play in two man tight end sets, be in as a fullback, put him in the slot. So Definitely a good first towel at the uh, tight end. Uh, then they got Naramaya Pritchett, Auburn, cornerback, uh, Satoa Lomea, offensive guard, Utah, so double dipping in the offensive line position, DJ James, Auburn, cornerback, and Michael Jarrell Finley out of Finley on uh, offensive tackle. So um, solid, solid draft by the Seattle Seahawks. Um, Byron Murphy, such a home run pick. Haynes taking care of the trenches. So I think this was a very solid um, draft by the Seahawks. I mean, the wide receiver position is taken care of. They got Kenneth Walker at the running back position. Um, I don't know. Um, Maybe they could have gotten a safety. I don't know. But um, overall... Great, great pick by the Seattle Seahawks. So the draft grade that I will be giving the Seattle Seahawks is a B grade. Now, next up in the NFC West is the Arizona Cardinals. And man, did they have themselves a great draft class. First round pick four, no brainer, Marvin Harrison Jr. I am very glad that the Cardinals did not trade back. There is a serious need at the wide receiver position. So getting Maserati, Marvin Harrison Jr. is such a solid home run pick for the Cardinals. Give Kyler Murray a great target in the passing game. Let's just hope that Kyler Murray is healthy and can play every game. Uh, Marvin Harrison is going to at least probably break 1,000 receiving yards. That's my bold prediction. I think he'll probably break 1,000 receiving yards. That'll be his minimum. I think that is a great pick for the Cardinals. With their second first-round pick, Darius Robinson, very, very versatile defensive lineman. He could play as a defensive tackle, play as an edge, high motor. Uh, I believe he was one of the top edge rushers this past season and the SEC. Um, His combine results, especially his 40, I believe, wasn't the best, but... Definitely a fringe first rounder, early second round pick, but there is it was an edge need for the Cardinals. So getting someone in Darius Robinson, great choice in that pick. Max Mount in the second round, inside out, versatile cornerback, ball hawk. I believe he had about eight interceptions in the past three season at Rutgers. So very, very sticky corner. He very good at press uh, playing press man coverage. Um, I think he is better suited playing press man coverage than off man coverage, but ball hawking cornerback definitely needed a quarterback. So getting Max Melton was a solid choice. Trey Benson, easily a top five running back in this draft class. James Conner is turning 29 years old. We don't know how much gas is left in the tank. So thinking early and long term for the running back position, getting someone as Trey Benson. I think getting Marvin Harrison Jr. At wide receiver, top five running back in Trey Benson. The Cardinals have been getting solid, solid draft picks this draft class. Then they got an offensive tackle, Isaiah Adams out of Illinois, as well as getting the tight end out of Illinois, Tip Ryman. Um, Getting Elijah Jones with the fourth pick in the third round so this was like in the third round they had four picks Eliza jones great press man coverage corner um i believe that him and max melton will be the future cornerback 
cornerstones in this organization. But the amount of draft picks that the Cardinals had, I believe they made great, great use in each selection. Dadrian Taylor Demerson, he could play in two high looks, single high looks. He could play in the slot. He could play in the box. Such a versatile secondary player. Um, I think he'd probably been one of the top like when you're thinking about hybrid safeties cooper de is on that list javon bowler is on that list he is definitely on that list like if you're looking for a versatile hybrid safety cardinals did a great job with that pick xavier thomas edge out of clement clemson christian jones tackle out of texas so double dipping at the tackle position dewan balmer wide receiver at U, out of UAB, and then the seventh round, Jaden Davis, Miami cornerback. But overall, this Arizona Cardinals team, I got to give them an A. A plus, honestly. No, this is an A plus draft grade for the Arizona Cardinals. Great value, great picks. Damn near everybody can be instant contributors on this team. There are so many holes that needed to be filled on this team. And with the amount of draft picks that they got, they're all going to step up and be playmakers for this team. Arizona Cardinals hit the head on this one. Eight plus grade for the Arizona Cardinals. Last but not least, out of the NFC West, the San Francisco 49ers. Let's take a deeper dive into the draft class, starting with the first round pick. Ricky Purcell, Florida out of wide receiver. I got to say, this pick really, really surprised me. Um, I don't think he's better than um, Keon Coleman. I don't think he's better than Xavier Leggett. I don't think he's better than Troy Franklin. I don't even think he's better than late Lad McConkey um, or... Added name Mitchell, so I probably named about four or five receivers in this draft better than Ricky Purcell. But the foreigners, the 49ers went in a very questionable route. I'm sure Ricky Purcell, probably a great route runner. Maybe this was a pick based off maybe scheme. I understand there are uncertainties at the wide receiver position, whether Debo's coming back or Ayuk's coming back or the future of either or. Um, but I understand the wide uh, the wide receivers position being um, a long term need, especially with Debo and Ayuk in the room. But I think this may have been a bit of a reach of a pick here for the 49ers. I think they could have gotten him or a better wide receiver option in the second round. But um, this is more of a questionable reach pick. So that was probably like a C plus C kind of pick. Didn't really like it, but maybe the 49ers saw something in him that probably fit their scheme and style. Round two, Renardo Green, Florida State. He is a sleeper cornerback in this draft class. I believe it was against LSU where he was matched up against Malik Neighbors and pretty much shut him down. Um, Pretty much shut down Malik Neighbors down in that game. And if there is a cornerback that has tape of shutting down a top receiver in college, that's definitely going to boost your draft stock. And I think Renardo Green was looking like a third, fourth round pick. But the fact that he got selected in the second round definitely boosted his stock. Very underrated pick. Such a sleeper cornerback. I can see him making being an instant contributor in that room. I mean, I'm sure the 49ers have um, the secondaries taken care of a bit. But Renardo Green, that's a name you will be hearing soon in the 49ers um, team. Then the third round, they decided to invest in the offensive line with Dominic Puny, Kansas offensive tackle. He is versatile as well. I'm sure he could play both tackle positions, both guard positions. He even took reps at the center position, I believe, at the senior bowl. So a very versatile offensive lineman. Don't know how long Trent Williams will be there for, and I'm sure um, you can never... Uh, stop investing in the offensive line, especially if Brock Purdy, especially he is the franchise quarterback. So definitely got to take care of the trenches in there. And he's such a versatile offensive line in peace. So solid pick by the 49ers. Then they got Malik Mustafa, safety out of Wake Forest. Isaac Garendo, running back out of Louisville. Isaac, he exploded onto the scene 
from his NFL Combine results. I believe he had a top 5 40-yard dash out of all positions in the NFL Combine. Um, this guy, lightning quick. He doesn't have a lot of thread on the tires, so I think he's you know very low mileage running back. Him being in a room with Christian McCaffrey going to definitely help out with his development. That is going to be a solid running back duo. Christian McCaffrey, Isaac, the 49ers got a great steal getting Isaac in the fourth round. So that that definitely surprised me that the 49ers got him, but they came out as winners with that pick. Then they got JP Cowing, wide receiver out of Arizona, Jerry Kinson, USC offensive guard, and Tatum Bethune, Florida State linebacker. Overall, the 49ers had a great draft. I mean, I understand the first round pick was a bit questionable. I'm good, you know, I did name a few wide receivers who I think is better. But over other than that, Renardo Green could definitely be a plug and play starter. Great tape against Malik Neighbors. I'm sure he'll be able to stop top wide receivers in the NFL. Puny for the top offensive lineman, Malik Mustafa, safety depth. Isaac going to be a great rotational running back behind Christian McCaffrey, investing in the line, getting additional wide receiver, double dipping in Jacob Cowan, and investing in the linebacker position, Tatum Bethane. But overall, the 49ers had a solid draft, and I was going to give them a B plus, but I just think that who they got definitely fits the 49ers theme, uh, scheme style. Um, so I'm going to give them a borderline A, borderline A for the 49ers. But thank you so much for watching this video. Please comment below on your draft grades, who your favorite team is, and who you wish your team would have gotten. But overall, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe to the channel. I make weekly content on Mondays and Fridays. But overall, thank you so much and catch you next time.